Mississippi Satsu Jin Jikin, or Murder on the Mississippi, is one of the Famicom's most infamous games. To understand why, I'm just going to play out the very beginning of the game. And I'm dead. There's more reasons that it's bad than that, of course. It's just that the death traps that were added in the Famicom version became one of the things that people remembered about it. Let's back up a little bit. Murder on the Mississippi was originally a graphical adventure released for the Commodore 64 in 1985. It got a lot of praise at the time, and it was considered one of the better graphical adventures for the computer. Angelico's port of it broke just about everything. I'm going to start with the part that I'm least qualified to talk about, the translation. It makes the game sound like it was written by a small child. Grammar errors are common, including ones that even I can spot. It gives the impression of something that's been machine translated. Of course, that wasn't really an option in 1986. So maybe somebody translated it just by matching up words in a dictionary. I hope you take some comfort, though, in learning that Japanese players dealt with just as many cruddy translations as we did. That translation got in the way of the story. You're controlling Sir Charles Foxworth, who's traveling from St. Louis to New Orleans on a riverboat. He's accompanied by his man, Watson, who was Regis in the computer game. At the start, they're just busy bodies who stick their nose into people's cabins. Eventually, they'll stumble upon a body, and then the game is afoot. The very first thing you need to do is let the captain know that there's been a murder. So you go up to the pilot house, and then you bump into the side of it to be able to go see the captain. That door is one of the more annoying things in the game. The interface is a little bit tricky. You press the A button to switch into a command mode, and there's really only ever three commands. You can walk, you can search, or you can talk. And in one special place, you can investigate the evidence. I think that the cursor position isn't very clear. It's pointing at the line that's right above the cursor. When talking to the passengers and crew, you can ask them about other people, ask them about evidence, have them follow you, or ask them about a note you've taken. Something important to know about having them follow you, the game really only supports three characters on screen at once, except at the end when you gather everyone in the accusing parlor. So going someplace where there's another person will make them automatically depart. There aren't a lot of suspects wandering the riverboat. The murder victim was the partner of the captain, but his wealth has ties to many of the other passengers. The rest of the characters are a philanthropist who's been seen carrying a gun, a woman traveling east from her home in Nevada, a judge with a reputation for drinking too much, a wealthy widow who gossips far too much for her own good, a woman traveling to visit her famous aunt, and finally the ship's engineer, the computer game had another passenger, but they were cut. A nice feature of the game is that you can copy down anything that somebody says to your notebook. When they're finished talking, you press B to copy it down, or just A if it's irrelevant. Wait, did I say this was a nice feature? I meant horrible. Because on the Famicom version, people will only say what they're going to say once. And these notes have to be presented at certain points to advance the story. So if, for example, you hit the A button to cancel the text and, and accidentally skipped copying something vital down, the game's now in an unwinnable state. Making things worse? There's no way to go back in the Famicom game. On the computer game you could save, but here you have to complete the whole game in a single sitting, without making any errors, and without falling into any invisible traps. Screw up, and it's back to the beginning for you. Sometimes you'll need to examine evidence a little bit more closely. To do that, head back to your cabin, stand next to this table, and select this option. Then you can put things away in your trunk, or place them on the table for a close investigation. Finding evidence is a weakness that both the computer and Famicom versions have. You do it by standing next to something and choosing the search option, 
and then apparently you just look behind it. It actually makes the game feel like it's missing something. You don't do things like examining the body, or have to distract people so that you can search their belongings. It winds up taking away the feeling of it being a detective story. There's one last interesting bit of trivia to mention about this game. In Japan, there was an adventure gamebook based on it. Though apparently that gamebook doesn't have a lot to do with the actual game. I don't think the original Murder on the Mississippi holds up particularly well, but it's an interesting example of early graphical adventures. The Famicom version? The Famicom version is only something you'd play for a laugh. It's not worth the effort.